Okay, so today we're going to see about preparing interview questions. We, uh, so you've gone through the challenge and the tasks that you're going to do for this week. And so it's uh, related with um, hiring a new person or a new uh, employee. Uh, so for this session, we're going to assume that we already, we, okay. So is that a question or we've just started the presentation? Okay, I think it's the recording. Uh, so yeah, we're going to assume that we we, go, we already have uh, an outline, an outline or uh, a job description for specific job, and we're going to see how to prepare an interview question for that uh, job description. Okay, you're going to see about how to prepare it. Even if it's a comment term, we're going to go very towards these and comment things about job description by tomorrow with the Yaya, and we're going to see how to prepare the interview questions. So again, as, as, as I said before, we're going to, it's a common term, but we're going, we will see some specific things, we'll discuss about it, and we will share our insights on it. So um, interview questions can help a hiring man manager determine if candidate is the right fit for the role and the company. So by preparing a set of interview question, you can be more confident in choosing the best person for the job. So it's all about having a good or a the best person for specific job, job or role. Uh, so what is the point or uh, what is in the, what, what we will be able to do uh, by finishing or having an interview questions. So the first one is um, el elicit first-hand information about the candidate's background and work experience that arguments or clarifies what you have already learned from the candidate's resume. So we need to be sure there's this first step, right, going through the, the their CVs or their uh, resumes and choosing the uh, first, uh, cho choosing the right people or what it seems, who seems like the right person for uh that specific job description right so we, but we need to be sure since cv is going to be writing about yourself and describing yourself we need to be we need to make sure or um, verify if the things that are written in their cv is, is right or wrong so one of the methods after filtering out their cv the cv one of the method to ensure if that person uh, fits the place or not as the interview so uh, we're going to make sure whether the things that are mentioned or listed in their CV is correct or not. The second one is get a general sense of the candidates. I mean, behind, beside the CV or beside what is uh, written, we're going to check their aptitude, their enthusiasm, enthusiasm, their attitudes, and uh, in particular respect to how those attributes match up to the requirement of that job description. And the other one is to make the candidate's ability to adapt your department's work environment. It might be that person might be, uh, might fit well with that place or with that position, but I mean, uh, yeah, but it depends on, it, it might be hard for him or for that character to adapt your environment, your work environment. And if you need that person to adapt your environment very fast, if there are some things or deliverables that are supposed to be done as fast as possible, then, that might be an X for that person, okay? So those are the three things that we will keep in mind. First, assuring if the things or skills and characters mentioned in the CVs are right or wrong. And then um, having general aspects or general idea of that person in terms of many things and also specifically uh, for that requirement or for that job description. And then uh, check whether that person will be, even if he's a skillful or uh, uh, technically a good candidate, whether he can fit your work environment or adapt your work environment and things like that. Okay, so how to, let's see how to prepare the work environment question. Uh, how to prepare that from the beginning. So the first one is consider the company's need. Uh, so each job is different. So what do we say we usually? We do say that uh, we say that uh, there might be, you know, it might be perfect enough after having an interview, you might fail or pass for that interview, right? So we say it's not that you are a good or it's not, it doesn't mean that you are not qualified in specific thing. It, it means that you are not qualified for that specific position, okay? So we need to consider the company's need. So depending on that, 
each job is different and every company has its own culture and knowing the company wants it's going to help you to prepare a good interview question and then to choose a good to decide with a good candidate so for example what do we mean by considering the company's need it's what are the company's value that might be uh, the company wants employees who have integrity and show respect to others or it might be a company that don't that much coordinate or relate with each other with persons and that encourage independent work so that those types of characters are not going to be counted or they're not uh, they they do not have value uh, and maybe how does the newly hired uh, candidate will support the team if the, what type of candidate does the team needs okay so is the team lacking someone to collaborate or to effectively even if uh, beside the, the skillfulness or the skills that it's required is that that's the company is requiring someone to collaborate and to communicate well okay so we need to know what the company culture is and what the company is specifically seeing or looking or what is its need and then there's the second thing which is assess the job opening okay so then we're going to go through the job description as, as we said we're going to imagine that we already have the job description so we need to assess that so take time to assess what the job entails, including the requirements, the functions, and the goals of the position. So here it will help us to uh, prepare, again, to prepare a good question depending on the job description, right? Uh, and the third thing is uh, identify the ideal candidate, which means identify type of, the type of candidate who may be who may best fit the role. Consider, consider what qualities may help a candidate meet or exceeds the expectation of the position uh, so which means like uh, now we have already the job description and we have those questions we got those questions that are directly related with that job description and now we're going to see things that are for example let's say uh, it's we're looking for a de developer software developers we're going to the one of the job description listed is uh, a developer that can work effectively with uh, React programming language. If that is in the if that is in the job description, then we're going to prepare a question, an interview question that says, uh, "What is your skill, or are you able to code or to use React for development?" That's going to be for the second question, assessing the job opening, and to identify the ideal candidate, we might say, "If you are." Uh, if you are not uh, i mean how how familiar or how for for how many projects have you used that programming language or how many projects have you done through it how exp how much for how much time have you used that programming okay if not or if you're not if you just know the concept how fast are you going to are you able to work to get adapt to that programming language that is the thing that we want to know so we might ask uh how is your learning um Curve. Okay, is that fast or is that slow? So if you're specifically seeing or looking for a person who is fast paced, uh, then that question might, will help us to filter out the f fast learning people and or uh, the slow learning people. Okay, and then I, for after after identifying the, the ideal candidate, I hope you have differentiated between assessing the job opening and the ideally. Uh, the and identifying the ideal candidate and then the customize the question to the role which means uh, as the interviewer you establish the tone for the job interview structure equations to the to reflect the work environment and company culture so candidates know what to expect in the new position so let's see an example if you're hiring customer service you may prepare questions to determine candidates demeanors and behavior when, the, when speaking other, with others so it might not be the, uh, it should be actually it's, it might be a question that is directly related with how is your behavior how can you communicate with others and things like that also you can see you can ask them a question that will help them or that will um, that needs to interact or to talk more about that for the answer and to see how they can uh, express themselves or how they can uh, say or tell specific things okay so it's you're going to customize sorry you're, you're going to customize the question or all the vibes towards getting your specific need or 
with things that are related with the um, with the position okay so um, it's not that it's not only for this type of or for the customer service thing like we can mention how what can we mention uh for example uh, let's say let's say that we need we are looking for someone who is who for who can operate with machines okay so we might ask of course we're going to ask uh, as the second um, label we're going to ask questions that are directly with related with the job opening and then to filter out ideal candidate how much you have you worked with that type of machine and things like that also we can customize the question as uh what type of machine do you know like general knowledge okay uh, is that person that related with this specific uh um field or department so you know they don't those types of things, not the specific thing, but all the specific things, all the general things, I mean. So you can customize your question as that. And also use open-ended question, which means open-ended question, they're a good way to encourage candidate to engage with you during the interview process, okay? It's not, it might not be just a yes or no. Have you done that? Have, have you ever did that? Have you ever done that? Okay, but why? Like, what have you done? Why have you done this? Or what encouraged you to do this? So. I think you, most of you are familiar with interviews, right? Um, you might be, so you know what type of questions people ask most of the time. So what kind of professional relationship do you form with team members or clients, okay? So the first thing is we need to get the answer. The second thing is we will see how they are answering that. You need to be, you need to be a person that can analyze things or understand things from the way they have said it. it they might present you something that is already on their mind or they are already on or they might tell you something that they they really feel okay um so it's also sometimes a yes or no questions are things that can be answered or everyone when we go to uh, an interview we're going to make ourselves ready right so we they might come ready for all the questions which sometimes might not be that much exp uh, might not express that much about themselves but if it is an open-ended question you also have the chance of making the question random or unexpected so if it is an, an unexpected question they might need to think or answer the things that will come to their mind or that is more real so um, yeah make sure to prepare an open-ended question that's also somehow related with their uh, feel or with the job description and also uh, if there is something that you want to know about them which will answer that question so then let's add some tips the first is every question you ask during a job interview should have a specific purpose right because you're going you're about to interview uh, many people or many um, candidates so you need to be every question needs to be useful um so or that needs to have to bring some information about them that's going to use that is going to be useful for your screening purpose um,
I was out and I was okay. I just knew that I was that I was out. Okay, I'm back. So can you tell me in which part I was back? Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, guys. Which part uh, well, what was I talking about? Because <laughs> I will have gone through almost every slide. Okay, let me just share and you will tell me. You are the tip. I think it's from, from uh, open ended questions. Okay, here. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I think everything is all right now. So if I am, I was literally out. That's why I didn't uh, heard. I will make sure to check. Sarah. So on use the open-ended questions, we were saying that uh, open-ended questions are a good way to encourage a candidate to engage with you during the interview process. So uh, asking a normal questions like or asking a yes or no question. Um, yeah, it's going to give you a yes or a no question. So pe people uh, might be ready on that for that answer. So, okay, since it's going to be easy, it's um, they might be ready for that type of answer. But open ended question will help you to create a scenario or a situation or to ask a question that is not which is uh, which is unexpected somehow. I'm still on, right? <laughs> which is not expected okay so uh how do you how do your former manager describe you okay there are some questions that an employee or the candidate might not huh? any problem yeah there are some questions that the, your manager your um the candidate might not guess, so open-ended question will help you to ask a questions, or an, an unexpected questions, or to see the real um, expressions or the real answers from the candidates. Okay, so, and let's go to the tips. Uh, the tips that we're going to use mostly for, uh, that we should use while preparing an interview. The first one is uh, every question you ask during a job interview should have a specific purpose. Okay, since we're making an interview, uh, uh, we're going to go through different candidates. We're going to interview many candidates. We're not. We don't need. We don't really need to make the uh, the time is pr pr priceless, right? So even if you're going to make it as as good as um, you can or as interactive and easy as you can, you need to ask every question that are going to have a benefit for you or that will help you to gain some insight about the candidate. So every question you ask during job interview should have specific purpose. That purpose may be to elicit specific information to obtain some insight to the candidate's experience or, or to examine their thought process when presented with certain situation. Okay. And the other one is yeah. the other one is an interview should be as structured as possible so that each candidate is evaluated according to the same general criteria. Uh, okay. I'm just worried that if I get cut in the middle, okay. An interview should be as structured as possible so that um, you need to ask the same type of question for everyone, okay? Where may I was saying that, um, so for example, let's assume that we have two candidates and we, uh, according to the evaluation, those two candidates have the same point key and assume that you've asked one of the candidates if they are, let's say that the job description, the job description is uh, to hire a good uh, programmer or software developer. So, uh, and maybe specifically on a language called React, okay? So let's say that we have, uh, Depending on number one, number two, number three, we assess the job opening and we have mentioned questions for that can fit for that job opening. And then we have identified um, some questions that will uh, help you to hire an ideal candidate for that specific position. And we have customized that role uh, or that questions for in order to align for the roles. Okay. And we have used an open ended question and uh let's say we have add one we have added one question that is uh, have you used a language called python 
and let the other second person say yes we have added this question eventually inside the interview um, session okay and one of the candidates said yes and the other uh, you haven't asked this question for the other person okay so this question is not it's it was not part of the structure or it was not part of it's not uniformly asked throughout the candidates. So if while determining one person that can fit for that position, if two person have the same point on that uh, while evaluating them, and they might make a difference on this. Okay, as an interviewer, you, you, you're you for sure going to go with the person who have added, I can do Python, I can also work with Python, okay? But you, you haven't asked the same question for the other candidate, but of, you know that, but you're going to choose the first one. So for that purpose, you need to prepare your questions very um, uh, wisely, and then you're not. You, we don't need to add questions, new questions that are not related with other okay, or that are not related with answer on for that purpose for that person or for a specific person. So an interview should be structured as possible, so that each candidate is evaluated according to the same general criteria. Is it possible to ask subject matter question? Okay, Tahir. Yes, yes, there is. But we're going to keep your question and we're going to uh, get back to it, okay? After finishing the uh, presentation, because I feel like we, we might answer that question at the end. So it's also, um, yeah, we just said we need to have common structures and ask for, but, but we have the right to ask for specific questions on their CVs, okay? So imagine, like we have seen about Python, right? So, but imagine that the second person have just mentioned that he can do, he have done many projects with Python on, on his CV. So we have the right, if that is the case, then we have the right to ask the specific question for this person and not mentioning this question for the other one because it's not already mentioned on their CV. So we can ask, uh, not only this This is related with this specific example, but uh, we have the right to ask question about anything that that is mentioned on their CV. Let's assume that they have said that we have developed or we have created this, this type of organization. I have laid or uh, I was the co-founder of this company, things like that. You have the right to ask questions based on that uh, specifically mentioned things, okay? that the questions will help you to get more insight or more understanding of that person and also it will help you to uh, make sure that the things that are listed on the CV, on their cv as an experience or as any as a skill whether they are right or not so if you if you have some knowledge about that specific thing mentioned it's a plus for you because you can ask more detailed question and you can make sure that if that person really was part of the things that you have mentioned. So uh, yeah, look for key or verbs that are used, such as like I have initiated, developed, created, organized, these types of things. And based on that information, you can ask more questions that might not be asked for the other person. And it's also appropriate to ask a candidate follow-up questions to a response that encourage further conversation, okay? Like, can you give us more details and things like that? So most of the time, those types of things are, you will continue the conversation if you are somehow interested with the things that the person have mentioned. So based on the communication or the flow of question, you can add more questions, but you cannot ask some questions that are new, which are not mentioned for another. So using those tips will help you to make more appropriate and uh, insightful uh, interview questions. It needs to be structured. Every question needs to have something that will add information about that person. Uh, so, yeah, these are this uh, these are the things that will get, that you will get from the good questions. So, focus on those things while writing the question. First, it gives you the specific information you're seeking, and then it help you. It will help you gain insight about that person and also like how will they react in specific or in various situations. It needs to be structured, we've mentioned that. Yeah, you need to, you can add things that are going to be, that are related with that, that are mentioned on their CV, okay? In order to dig more or in order to make sure about the things mentioned. And also it's appropriate to ask candidate follow-up questions on if you are interested, somehow interested also, or also in order to know more about that person, okay? Yeah, so, 
it is somehow common sense you can use many things uh, many common sense things while preparing the question also try to follow those rules and steps and also tips okay thank you everyone now we can go to the question okay Tahir it's possible to ask subject matter questions but yeah I, so if you mean like subject matter question subject in essence the things that we address the job description or what do you mean by subject which subject or personal question do you mean Tahir Tyre, can you hear me? Okay, Tyre, or you can write uh, related to the course he learned. Yes, yes, related to, to the course he learned, which means if, if that is a course that is mentioned on his CV, yeah, if, you're going to know if that is mentioned on his on his resume or CV, right? So you can ask everything that's mentioned on their CV, but you need to be reasonable, okay? Is that question is going to help you to know something or to gain some insight about that person. Okay, what is them for this task are we really, okay, yeah. For this task are we really limited to a number of questions per candidate? Honestly, we need to go through your document. What is the maximum number of questions expected for each job? There is no specific questions uh, limited for any job. There might be an interview questions that might be a deep, if generally talking. There might be some specifications that you need to, specifications that need to have more questions and more insights about that person, or even some questions are enough for some case. So it depends. So let's go through the task document ones, uh, the challenge document, I mean. Yeah, yeah, there is no limited number of uh, questions that you need to ask, but depending on the situation uh, or understanding of the, the concept, there might be some areas that we expect you to write more interview questions or uh, specific uh, small number of interview, which might be small number of questions might not might be enough for some task and more details might be required for another okay. So there is no specific number that you're required to write. If it needs to be specific, then we're going to specify it, but it's not that important. Do you get my point? Kola, Jane, Tosten. So we are at liberty with the You are. <laughs> but uh, focus on the, on the issue, okay? So like, yeah. Uh, giving you the right and at the same time specifying it we might not accept two and three questions two and three questions will uh, is not going to be enough we consider that so yeah but uh, yeah but depending on the questions you can go up to 10 or as, up to five and things like that also we're going to see the quality of your question more than the, as the at the same time tahir what was your first question my yeah it's possible to ask subject subject matter question so I have asked you back, what do you mean by subject? And you have just said related to the course you learned it. If that is what you mean, I have just answered that if that thing or the course is mentioned on the CV, then if you have the right to ask based on that. So what do you mean by, by subject? This is there. Is there a guide? line we follow when we prepare interview question yes those are tips it's it's yeah you can consider it as a guideline and there's the guideline and also there are some tips also you can add another tips from yourself you can or as i have mentioned earlier it's you can also go in a common sense okay as far as you are able to describe the reason behind 
every equation and the insight that you're going to gain from them, you are free to use any insights and another guidelines too, a plus guidelines. But you can use these guidelines and tips as preparing the questions for preparing the questions. There are seven departments provided. Okay, there. There are seven departments in the provide challenge document. Can we prepare a separate document for each department and store them in one folder? Again, I will be back to the document. So if there is nothing that is stated about doing specific thing on the document, then it means that you have the right to do it uh, uh, in a way that you want. But let's, let me go through it again if there is something that I missed on this question. Oh, in a document form. So by 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 the word that by the word in a different document, you mean that different files. So when you submit when you submit your files, you're going to submit different files. Is that what you mean by different documents? Zero file. Yeah, I think that's your point, right? Different files and then submitting them in a folder. Is that the question, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If that no, it's the same task. Since every questions are the same, the same, you need to separate the main title. Okay. So, what's the benefit for folder? What is the benefit for folder? Folder. Yeah. Oh, is the folder mentioned on your document? Yeah. Uh, during the introduction. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to go through the document and create a folder called okay job description and store all the above job descriptions. A folder called job description. Okay, it's related with the job description. This is not for the interview case, okay? For the for preparing the interview case. This is not for that. So for the interview for preparing the job for the uh, interview questions, you don't need to create different folders. You can create all the interview questions for different uh, departments or fields in one document. Uh, for the job description part, you will be clarified on the job description session by tomorrow. But uh, create a folder called job description and store all the job. Yeah, yeah, it seems like you need to create a folder for the job description. Yeah, it seems like it's for the folder. It's for the job description, I mean, not for the interview. Uh, yeah, there is, uh, we have just changed the sessions due to some reason. That is why we are seeing the interview question, the task two for today. Yeah, so we can also have one document and separate them by headings. It's okay for the interview, you can have one document only, which are just, uh, yeah, by headings, yes. And it was for the job description, I think. Yes, so then you're right. Okay. Any other questions? If not, then we can finish. We can, un we can end the session here. Goodbye, guys.